Hi, this is Dr. Jim Hoag. I just tried doing a Facebook uh, live post using my phone outside, and for some reason uh, I'm losing the connection, so I'm just going to do this as a straight video rather than a Facebook live. And what this is going to be about is uh, foraging in your backyard or your park or your lawn for great nutrition. I got a really good book earlier this year called uh, The Wild Wisdom of Weeds, and I'll post all the information for that along with this. But I started foraging uh, for greens in my backyard, and uh, something I've been interested in off and on for quite a long time. I was a Yule Gibbons fan back in the 80s. And um, after, and what I do, I, I gather a big bunch of greens in the backyard and then uh, blend them up uh, with pomegranate juice and egg white powder uh, and use some frozen strawberries or blueberries uh, to make a smoothie. After doing this for about a month, I thought, gee, you know, I've had high cholesterol, over 300, for quite some time. And uh, I haven't been too worried about it because my, uh, my triglyceride to HDL ratio, which is a measure of how likely the LDL, the bad cholesterol, is to stick to your arteries, uh, was always perfect. Um, ideally, you want to have it about... Uh, one would be perfect, two is okay, three, you're kind of getting in trouble. Mine's always been right around one. And I've had a number of uh, checks for my carotid arteries here, uh, ultrasound checks done to uh, determine if I had a problem with uh, placking. There's no plaque in there, so I have basically virgin arteries, and so I wasn't too concerned. But I thought after doing this, uh, this diet uh, three times a week on my days off um, for lunch, um, I thought, I wonder if it has any effect on my cholesterol. And interestingly enough, I did my, I checked my cholesterol, and it dropped by 30 points. I thought, cool. And I kept on, you know, uh, doing this because it's fun and uh, nutritious. And uh, another month went by, it dropped by another 20 points. So I haven't checked it since then, but in two months, it dropped my cholesterol by, by uh, 50 points. So cool. Uh, later on, I found out that. Um, two of the ingredients on in my smoothies, pomegranate juice and dandelions, uh, have the effect of lowering cholesterol. So what I what I do today is I take you through a little tour of the um, the goodies in my backyard and uh, things that I've been harvesting all summer long. Um, and I thought I'd do it before uh, what, what, what before we uh, it goes away for the winter. I may do I may do this again in the summer. Uh, or in the spring, but I thought I want to get this information out there now. So I'm going to switch from um, selfie mode to camera mode. Okay, here's part two of the video. What we're going to do now is look at some of the goodies I have growing in my backyard. Now I want to tell you that if you don't have the same advantage I have, having lots of broadleaf weeds growing in the backyard, uh, then don't worry about it because you can go to a park, just make sure uh, that if you go someplace else that uh, for your harvesting that you that they have not been spraying the grass or, or spraying the lawns usually if you see lots of broadleaf plants with uh, and they look like they're in good shape then they probably haven't been sprayed but you want to check so I mentioned uh, earlier that dandelions are like the they're really like the king and here we have a nice dandelion growing there and we have these sawtooth shaped leaves they're very obvious dandelions um, every part of the dandelion is edible the leaf the flower the roots what okay yeah Karen just telling me that the uh, Facebook live isn't working which I realized earlier that's why I'm making this as a video instead um, but the dandelions uh, I found out after I've been doing all this are are low in cholesterol, they actually lower cholesterol. Uh, they have a lot of amino acids and proteins in them. They're high in B vitamins, high in vitamin K, high in vitamin uh, in calcium and potassium. They have anti-inflammatory, they're high in polyphenols, which have anti-inflammatory properties. They also are very good for liver cleansing and support. And uh, an interesting study at Indiana University, uh, dental study showing that they inhibit plaque formation. 
and that's one of the things my dentist was very impressed with. Uh, they thought I'd, when I went in, I hadn't gone in to see a dentist in like three and a half years, and they thought that I'd had my last uh, dental cleaning six months earlier. So obviously uh, something, and there's other things I've done there, which I'll talk about later, that uh, may have helped as well. But I think the dandelions may have been part of that. So dandelions are the thing I really look for. Uh, it's given me a whole new attitude toward dandelions, I'll tell you that much. Now, uh, I enjoy seeing them in my lawn. Now, other things we have here, we have this uh, Creeping Charlie, which is a pain. Uh, it's very, very invasive. It grows quickly, but it, it's, but it's edible. So you can eat this. It, it, has, uh, it has medicinal properties. I keep running across references to, references to medicinal properties, but I haven't seen exactly what those properties are. They're brought over from Europe by settlers uh, to grow here as a ground cover, and they uh, have a, a, a kind of a minty flavor they add to things. Um, but they are edible, especially if you put them in a, uh, a smoothie. Now here, let's see, another one of my favorites, which I don't see here. Let me move around a little bit so I can find a different spot for you to look at. By the way, I like to forage on my bare feet. Gets me in touch with the ground, helps to make connections and, and uh, recharge and dis discharge. Let's see. Let's look over. Let's see if the sun is uh, a bit of a problem here. Maybe. Okay. So here we have wild. Can we see this? Yeah. It's a little too bright here. Let me go someplace else where there's a little less sun. My next thing I want to talk about is wild violet leaves because they are. Uh, pretty high in vitamin C and vitamin A, and they're very tasty. And we have some over here. The bugs are liking them too. So we have these are kind of large wild violet leaves. I find if they grow close to my garden, they get pretty big. Um, here we have some more common type of wild violet leaves here. Like so these are high in, in A and C, and they're very they kind of taste like lettuce. But as Karen, my wife, says, they're a little, they taste like fuzzy, fuzzy lettuce. One thing we like to do is pick a bunch of these and saute, you know, cut them up and saute them and then toss scrambled eggs in and make scrambled eggs with uh, wild violets leaves in there. Now another very interesting uh, plant is these, let's see, okay. So here we can see a little red, can you see it? A little red berry. This is a wild strawberry. And this actually, these are Indian wild strawberries. And here you can see a bunch of these leaves. You have these, these triple leaf thingies here. They're sort of a dark colored, serrated leaf. And these, again, are very high in vitamin A, vitamin C, and chlorophyll. They also have uh, a number of interesting medicinal properties, uh, which includes uh, anticoagulants. So you might not want to eat this if you're taking another anticoagulant like Plavix or um, Warfarin or Coumadin. But on the other hand, if you want to thin things out a little bit, it might be helpful. I've been eating these for a long time, and I haven't had any bruising. Not sure how strong the anticoagulant properties are. Now another, let's see, what have I got? What else have we got here? Um, oh, clover, yeah. Now the clover isn't as prominent now as it was. Early in the year, you see a lot more clover, and it's really dominant. In my, this is white Dutch clover here. And this, again, is high in A and C. Also, uh, calcium, magnesium, um, phosphorus, potassium, B vitamins, and tryptophan. One of my favorite plants is really, it's really kind of past its time. And uh, I'm going to show you a picture of it here. This is lamb's quarter, which I allow to grow. Actually, I encourage to grow in my garden. The seeds 
are actually pretty nutritious, very high in, very high in protein. And uh, the leaves, though, are wonderful greens. They're some of the earliest greens that grow in the garden. And uh, they're very nutritious. Uh, again, high in vitamin C, high in iron. Very good for people who, uh, you know, maybe a little anemic. Also, a good source of protein. Uh, and also have good anti-inflammatory properties, just like dandelions do. By the way, dandelions are especially... Um, are especially high in anti-inflammatory properties right after they flower. So if you look at your dandelions and watch them as just after they flower, is the best time to pick the leaves for the anti-inflammatory properties. All right, well, that is my Eat Your Lawn video. And I will be publishing this, I guess, if you're, watch, if, if you're watching this now, I've already published it because this is not on Facebook Live. I'm going to pu publish this as a, as a video on Facebook. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.